Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and tonight during the big Marvel special we got our first look at Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, at least what they're going to look like in the movie, it was all concept art, but we also got a look at some Hulkbuster armor, which kind of informs what the plot of Avengers 2 is going to be just a little bit. The whole thing was just a deep dive into their creative process and Marvel Studios behind the scenes behind all these big movies that make up the cinematic universe. So I'm mostly going to focus on the new stuff, you know, the Avengers 2 and the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, but I'll also talk about some of the fun facts that I thought were really interesting. If you're finding me for the first time, I typically do Marvel movie videos every Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe to get everything, and feel free to suggest a future video in the comments. So I'm just going to start with the really important stuff first, then work my way through Avengers 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant-Man, Phase 3, and then talk about some fun facts. So here we go. Let's start with the children of he who must not be named because of copyright. I'm talking about Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, of course. They haven't started principal photography on their scenes yet, and most of the footage we've seen from Johannesburg was all second unit stuff. So all of this was concept art, but it really is what they'll actually look like. It's just the plainclothes millennial version of their characters. Maybe during the course of the film, they'll get official Avengers costumes like Captain America got in that first movie. I won't talk about it in this video, but there actually is a scene with those two characters that you'll be able to see really soon. I have spoilers for it in my Avengers 2 video I posted last week. I'll have a link to that at the end of this video if you want to see it. But now, let's talk about some Hulkbuster armor. It's a slightly modified and colored version of the armor we saw during Iron Man 3, meaning he's rebuilt some of his armory and the Hulk is going to be a huge problem in Avengers 2. In the comics, there's this really notable story called World War Hulk. It takes place directly after the Planet Hulk storyline. Hulk just comes back to Earth and beats the crap out of every single superhero he can see. A lot of people, including myself, thought that they would do a storyline like this at some point, especially in a standalone Hulk film. We didn't really think it would happen this soon though. It's going to be a lot of fun though. In that first film, he really didn't collide with the team too much. In the sequel, it seems like Mark Ruffalo is going to be smashing a lot more stuff. You know, spending much more time in character as the Hulk. Side note too, the Red Hulk was also a huge part of the Age of Ultron comic book story. That story won't be what this film is about. This is actually going to be more about the Mighty Avengers Ultron Initiative storyline, but I really do think that everyone wants that standalone Mark Ruffalo Hulk film at some point, hopefully soon. Just speaking about one of the most important characters though, Ultron, he was not present, nor was James Spader. Though here's some details about the actual story of the movie. The larger story is mostly going to be inspired by Mighty Avengers Ultron Initiative. That's where Ultron takes over the armor of Tony Stark. It came after the Civil War storyline. You can actually read the comic books if you want to learn more about that. So let's move on to Phase 3 for a second before we talk about some fun Avengers facts. Feige actually repeated some of his earlier comments about changing the Avengers roster, mostly referring to Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch in Avengers 2, but they also played the Ant-Man test footage over the credits. It's just the old test footage that Edgar Wright played at Comic-Con a long time ago. But in my Ant-Man preview this morning, I actually predicted that he would become part of the Avengers during the third movie, Avengers 3. It's not rocket science, Scott Lang actually became an Avenger in the comic books. That really raises the question though, who are they going to cycle out of the Avengers if they're going to be cycling people in? Right now, Robert Downey Jr.'s last movie is Avengers 3. He's going to be the first man out probably. After that, unless he takes a major pay cut, they'll be forced to either cut him out, the character out, or recast the part of Iron Man. Moving on in Phase 3 though, it's pretty obvious that they're pushing towards the collection of the Infinity Gems to reform the Gauntlet. It's a little too early to do any Avengers 3 videos, but feel free to ask me anything about how all this stuff fits together with the Infinity Gauntlet in the comics. It'll largely be S.H.I.E.L.D. and Guardians of the Galaxy that will be the connective tissue between the cosmic elements of the films and the Earth-based films. So eventually we're going to get a diner scene with Agent Coulson and Star-Lord at some point in one of these movies. So here's a couple Marvel and Avengers facts that I thought were really cool that we learned during the special. Some of them were just really funny. Starting things off, whenever they first got started with Iron Man, almost every single writer in Hollywood that they offered the project to turned it down. Number two, the only reason they were able to obtain financing for the first couple of films was by bundling them together in what would eventually be known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it wasn't just a genius creative decision. They actually did it for financial reasons too. That was the only way the bank would buy into it. 3. During the first Iron Man, after Gwyneth Paltrow signed onto the project and came in to meet with Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. for the first time, they all ended up crying in a weepy mess just because they were so happy that everything was working out. It was a huge gamble. 4. Samuel L. Jackson actually won the part of Nick Fury in that same Iron Man film because his agent cold called Kevin Feige and they just loved the idea so much. 5. 
the Tesseract became the first big MacGuffin. That's the thing that drives the plot forward with very little, you know, if no explanation. In Phase 2, it's going to be the Infinity Gems, and in Phase 3, it'll be the Infinity Gauntlet. And last one, number 6, a nice George R. R. Martin clip. Turns out the Avengers were what made him fall in love with comics as a child. He actually did a podcast with Nerdist and Chris Hardwick about going to the first ever comic book convention in the world in New York. I'll actually post a link to that in the description below. So we saw a whole bunch of awesome new stuff, you know, including some very awesome teasers for some of the future films. Let me know what you're most excited to see. Guardians is really only a couple months away, and we might get to the point where Marvel is actually releasing four films a year. So let me know which films would you like to see them do next. At least that is in Phase 4 after Avengers 3. I know we're totally all thinking the same thing. We want a Deadpool movie. So right now, click here for my Ant-Man preview and click here for my Avengers 2 preview. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.